mine And if I'm getting just what I deserve For such cruel punishment to fit my crime Tell me how long must I burn I couldn't read the writing that was on the wall Am I so bad to not have discerned That this flame that I was feeding would soon take off How long must I burn In just one moment I realized Like watching my life flash before my eyes I found myself out on a burning limb She's really leaving me for him of all broken hearts is mine And if I'm getting just what I deserve For such cruel punishment to fit my crime Tell me, how long must I burn? And the love that we once knew Was now just a memory I've got it through my head But my hard-headed heart just will not believe Today, I'm proud to present as our guest, Wayne Jones and his wife, Maggie. Wayne is an inventor, and he has created a very timely invention that the world needs right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present Wayne Jones. Thank you very much for the opportunity for us to come and, and share with the people that you uh, have in your audience. We had an encounter at our home um, about a year ago that helped me to recognize that uh, our home was vulnerable and my family was vulnerable. And as a result, uh, I went out looking for a handgun uh, for home security and for self-protection. And uh, we went. In, we did that, and uh, I bought a handgun, and I brought it home, and I put it under my bed. And uh, when I put it under my bed, I, I really didn't think much about it. Uh, all of my children are grown. I, I do have one adult child that lives with us, but for the most part, my wife Maggie and I uh, are home alone most of the time. And so I didn't think much about it and uh, had it under the bed and in case there was a situation where I needed it. And uh, our grandchildren came to visit. Uh, we've got seven grandchildren and, and uh, my middle daughter, my youngest daughter's children came to visit. And uh, my wife came and grabbed me, uh, Maggie came and grabbed me and says, Wayne, do you, do you realize that you've got the gun under the bed? And I, I just kind of stepped back and thought, well, yeah, she's right. I do have the gun under the bed, but the, the grandchildren aren't allowed into our bedroom. And, and she says, no, you can never trust grandchildren or you can never trust children, yes. kids. And uh, children will explore naturally. And uh, so she helped bring it to my attention that I was I was taking too much risk with our grandchildren. And so I, I weighed the situation. I knew that we had had an encounter. And so I knew that it was important that, uh, that I had the security. but. There's nothing more important to me either uh, than my grandchildren and my children. Uh, without question, they're the deepest uh, to my heart of anything that I, I deal with. And so I thought about it a lot and I weighed it out back and forth. And of course, the grandchildren are here. So I immediately went and got the gun and I took it and put it in a vault that I have uh, that's out in my garage. And uh, when I put it in the vault, I, I basically defeated the whole purpose of having the weapon. And uh, so all of a sudden now I'm vulnerable again and I'm weighing, well, I had an encounter. It's the only encounter I've ever had in my whole life of that nature. And so maybe there's, this isn't as big a deal as I think it is. And so I decided I'd go ahead and put the gun out in the vault. And we did. And uh, it began to nag me uh, later uh, that, you know, I did have this encounter. My family's vulnerable. My home is vulnerable. We live quite rural. And so we decided to think about it more. And so I began to do some research. And as I researched, I found um, these small steel vaults. It's a, a small handgun vault um, that basically was made for this very situation. And so 
we thought, well, uh, let's go and see what it is that's out there. And so I went to a local shop, and sure enough, they had some of these vaults, and uh, they were very expensive. And um, so I looked at them. To, uh, as I looked at the cost, there was some that, that had biometric scanners, which were fingerprint scanners, to be able to access the vault to get into my gun quickly if I needed it. And so I thought, wow, this is, this is the answer. And so as we looked, I looked to see the variety that was out there. The ones that happened to be in this particular store, they were, uh, they were quite bulky. Um, they weren't really good to be put underneath my bed, uh, and they were very expensive. And I went, oh, I don't know if I want to do this or not. So I didn't buy one while we were there looking at those uh, those vaults or instant access vaults. So then we went home, and uh, I decided to look at it on, in the Internet. So I began to research in the Internet, and I, I just saw all kinds of bad press about these little vaults, about how unreliable they were and how they, they just didn't work well. And so uh, I, I realized that there was an opportunity or there was a need for something that worked better. Uh, but nevertheless, I didn't have anything, so I, I researched more. And the least expensive uh, case that I could see that had a reasonable reputation on the Internet and from reviews was one uh, that I found that was $270. And so this was the least expensive, what appeared to be reliable case. And so I decided, you know, $270, grandchildren, the gun under or out in the garage, not accessible to me, and uh, the uh, vulnerability of my family and myself and my home. And I said, you know, darn it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend the $270. And $270 was quite a bit. It, it made me really pause and uh, try to decide whether or not I wanted to do this. And in fact, I didn't. I, I, I didn't buy the gun um, in the vault. And I, I decided, you know, I, I am gonna put the gun back out in the vault, and I did. I put it back out in the vault. Well, I got thinking about it more, and, and it, it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. I am a product developer, and my specialty is plastic. And I have developed um, literally over a thousand different plastic products for different people and myself. And so I said, Wayne, what's the matter with you? You can develop something that's plastic that will be secure enough to protect this gun from your grandchildren. Now. Granted, it, it's not going to be one that is going to protect the gun from a Mission Impossible agent that's going to break into my house and is focusing on stealing my gun, okay? But then I realized, well, that isn't really what I need. I, I wasn't worried about somebody breaking in and stealing my gun. What I was worried about is having that gun accessible to me, and yet that I would protect my grandchildren from finding it accidentally, innocently, and finding it and having it draw their attention. Because if there's a gun underneath the bed and the grandchildren see it, it's an interesting thing. And so they might reach down and play with it and, and, and work with it. So, so I said, you know, we just got to protect the grandchildren, the innocent from this gun. And so uh, in my experience, one of the things that I've done in the past is we developed the very first uh, quarter or coin operated candy vending machine that uh, was plastic. Uh, all of them that were out there at the time, we began to develop this. I had a gentleman come to me and ask me to help him to develop um, a vending machine that was plastic that would be strong enough and secure enough uh, that people wouldn't break into it. And as I talked and visited with different people about this, people said, when you're crazy. There's two things inside that vending machine. There's candy and there's money. And people are gonna break into it. Well, we spent a lot of time, we did a lot of research, we did a lot of development. We built the first bulk candy vending machine, quarter operated vending machine that was plastic. It was, it was an ultra, actually the first one was called Easy Vend. And then the next one we developed was called Ultra Vend. And we put it out, we built all of the tooling, we designed it, we built the tooling, we put it on location. And you know what history shows. All the bulk candy vending machines on the market now are plastic. We succeeded. They are strong enough. They are 
they are reliable enough that people uh, can use bulk candy vending machines in all kinds of locations um, to uh, uh, so it worked well so I knew that I could convert something that was metal such as the vault this little instant access vault or a bulk candy vending machine I knew I could develop a, a less expensive instant access gun vault that would protect my grandchildren and protect the innocent again if it's a if it's an adult like me um, and I uh, worked with one of these metal vaults I know I could break into it well when I realized that I could do this that I was probably the one that should do this I went ahead and spent the two hundred and seventy dollars and bought the vault that was out there and, and experimented with it to try to find out whether or not uh, it was worthwhile. Well, the, the problem was it was unreliable. It was somewhat reliable. Um, I could program my fingerprint or my thumbprint, but it, it was not reliable. Every time when I put my finger on it, if I've got an intruder coming into my house, okay, and assaulting me or my family, and you know, I've got to access a gun, if I'm going to get into that vault, that darn thing better open the first time. It better open, and it better not open if my grandchildren try it. And so uh, the case that I bought that was $270 still wasn't reliable. And this had the best reputation and reviews on the Internet that we found. So I said, okay, we've got to go ahead and develop one. So now I began to research fingerprint scanners. And the first scanners we worked with were optical type scanners. So you put your thumb on it and a little light came on and scanned your finger and it worked relatively well. And in fact, these optical scanners are what you'll find in uh, government or say for example, if you've got a grocery store that employs a bunch of people, maybe they've got 30 people working for you and they're gonna punch a, a time clock well, they run the risk of having someone else punch the time clock. So they put in these scanners where you put your thumbprint on the scanner before you can put your time clock uh, register in. Well, that was the first one we worked with, but it still wasn't reliable. It didn't work well at all. And so we continued to do a lot of research to try to find a reliable scanner. So we went from optical scanners to biometric scanners. And biometric scanners read a lot of things in your print, not just your print, it'll even take the temperature in your hand to make sure it's not a false finger or something that somebody figured out. Well, if I've got an intruder that's coming in, they're not going to have a false finger. But nevertheless, biometric scanners are very sophisticated. They're much more involved than a typical optical scanner. So I determined that biometric scanners was the course that we were going to look into. So we started researching biometric scanners. It has to be affordable, we realize, because young families, if they can afford a handgun, they may, might not be able to afford a safe place to keep it from their children. And they may not realize just how curious kids are in that parents don't always know. I mean, the kids aren't going to say, hey, I've been snooping, you know. I had a good friend of mine tell me the other day, he says, you know, my children are grown now. But they said, Dad, what did you ever do with that? those guns that you used to have hidden under all those clothes in the closet back in the corner. And he said, you knew about that? And they said, well, yeah. <laughs> so they might not always tell their parents, but they know. So what Maggie's it, saying is... It needs is to be affordable. The, the need is there, and they've got to be affordable. And so as we worked on these biometric scanners to try to find a biometric scanner, they were extremely expensive. And this is what Maggie's getting at is we, we went, okay, I can develop a plastic case that's not very expensive. But now we get into biometric scanners, and biometric scanners are very expensive. As we were researching these um, scanners, the biometric scanners, um, we looked at the scanners that were on, like, the modern cell phone. And the modern cell phone scanner is a biometric scanner. And if you've got one of these cell phones with a biometric scanner, you'll find that you'll have to put your finger on it sometimes two or three times before it'll access your phone. Well, if you've got an intruder coming into your house and you've got your gun in a vault underneath your bed protecting it from the innocent, now you put your finger on it and you can't get into it. You've done several things. You've alerted the intruder that there's some under the bed he better be aware of, and you're scrambling trying to get to it. He's going to get to you before you can get into that gun, potentially. 
And so what we had to do is we worked with people, we hired people that were experts specifically in fingerprint scanners and specifically in biometric fingerprint scanners. And they worked with us and we developed one we call the second touch scanner, which took, over a year. which took over a year for us to develop. And back and forth, they kept providing different scanners. We finally came up with a scanner that's a, we call it a chip, that is a very reliable biometric scanner, but behind the chip, there's a PC board with a CPU in it that you can program that tells this scanner what to do and how to do it. Well, we worked with these same experts that do the, the programming, that work with these chips. We found a very reliable chip. That's the place you actually put your finger on. So a very reliable chip, very detailed in the information it gathers. Uh, we found one that was exceptional. But then the programming that was underneath it, we then started developing programming that was specific for a gun case. So now they gave us a, a scanner that was reliable. We worked with them on the biometrics. We developed the second touch scanner, and this is unique. It's called the second touch scanner because when you're programming your finger, you put your finger on it twice, and then it will record it so that it will work the first time every time for an authorized fingerprint. And so this is unique. The second touch scanner, which is something we've applied for a trademark for, the second touch scanner, you put your finger, well, first you push the button on the inside of the case to wake up the scanner that says, I'm going to program you. Then you put your finger on it about two seconds. You lift it off and it begins to beep. It'll beep, beep, beep. And this is prompting to you to put your finger back on it. So when you put your finger back on it, it's reading multiple things. It's reading temperatures. It's reading characteristics, it's reading your actual fingerprint, but then once you've put it on there for the second time for about two seconds, the light will turn green and it says your fingerprint has been registered and it keeps it and stores it in the case. And it will store up to 200 of these. So I can program my finger in lots of different directions to make sure there's no issues for me. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm startled, reach down no matter how i hit this thing it's going to open it you know. even opens if you have a scar on your finger which some people with optical scanners some people are very difficult to program and uh, one of our daughters was in the united states air force she had to access certain things using a fingerprint scanner and she could not get her fingers to read it wouldn't register they had a really difficult time and so now the thing that's important there though is yes it's extremely reliable and very simple and very versatile it'll even register fingerprints that are sometimes scarred now i've got to say it is not as reliable for a scarred finger you know, i would prefer that you use a fingerprint that's exceptional exceptional or a good one just even reasonable not extremely scarred i actually have a very scarred finger here it was banana peeled and I can program register this finger, okay? So this scanner, this second touch technology that we've developed is very simple to use, it's very accurate, it's very versatile, it can program many, many fingers that most people have never been able to use a fingerprint scanner for in the past. This is important. Um, I would like to share some statistics with you from the New York Daily News. According to the New York Daily News, guns hospitalize more than 7,000 children per year in the U.S. About 20 children and teens per day in the U.S. went to the emergency room with a gun injury in 2009, according to a new study of emergency room data. 6% of them ultimately died from their injuries. Uh, the point uh, is that many of these injuries are preventable, particularly in kids younger than 15. Additionally, keeping guns away from 15 to 19 year olds has a potential to save people's lives. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that homes with children be gun free, but if there is a gun in the home, that it be stored unloaded and locked with ammunition stored and locked separately. And so there's a lot of statistics on this that validate when we realized we had a problem before I wanted to spend the money and the time and the effort to create a resolution or, or create a, a solution to this problem. We wanted to find out how big this problem really, really is. 
And so we began to do more research. And so I'm going to ask Maggie to read a little bit more statistics about really how big of a problem this is. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, that's the CDC, indicate that 311 children aged 14 and under were killed in unintentional shootings between 2007 and 2011. That's an average of 62 a year. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention uh, Fatal Injury Reports National and Regional 1999 to 2011, and it's available online. The second thing is 2,694 children and teens died from guns in the U.S. in 2010 alone. One child or teen died every three hours and 15 minutes. Seven children and teens died every day, more than 20 every three days. 51 children and teens died every week. This is from the Children's Defense Fund, a 2013 posting. A Harvard survey of children in gun-owning households found that more than 70% of children under the age of 10 knew where their parents stored their guns, even if they were hidden and 36% of the children reported handling them. 39% of parents who thought their child was unaware of the location of the household's gun were contradicted by their children and one of every five parents who believed that their child had not handled the gun was mistaken. We can't afford to take that risk. This is from Francis Baxley and Matthew Miller, Parental Misperceptions About Children and Firearms from the Archives of Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine in 2006. Two million American children live in homes with unsecured guns. A third of American children live in homes with firearms. Of the homes with children and firearms, 55% were reported to have one or more firearms in an unlocked place. And 43% had unlocked firearms. That's not in a locked place and not locked with a trigger lock or any other locking mechanism. This is from Mark A. Schuster and others, Firearm Storage Patterns in U.S. Homes with Children from the American Journal of Public Health it, and it's in the year 2000, it's available online. So thank you, Maggie. It's, it's very obvious. It's incredibly important. This is even much more important than I thought it was. I had the encounter. We had a problem of our own. But it costs an unbelievable amount to develop and create a solution. We found a solution. We know of the problem. And so we began to develop it. I'm a master level social worker. I deal uh, in psychotherapy mostly. Can you imagine the terrible soul slaying feeling of having accidentally shot your brother or sister and having to live with that as you grow up? Or perhaps even having shot your parent accidentally? I, families disintegrate over differences in grieving. And when a person is taken from you in an unexpected and violent manner, uh, the grieving is far longer, and if you lose a child in such a manner, you may never, ever, ever recover from that. Uh, the existing cases on the market, there are cases out there, they're not reliable, and they're too darn expensive, and we realized that the expense involved alone made me not buy a case and put it underneath my bed. I put my gun out in the vault. Well, that's not protecting me. And if I put my gun underneath the bed, it's not protecting my children or grandchildren or the innocent. Okay, we created the case uh, that will secure the gun from children and the innocent. Uh, we chose uh, the name for this case as Artemis. Artemis is the Roman goddess of light and the protector of the vulnerable. And so this is the reason that we chose the name. This is not to protect again uh, your diamond ring from a robber. This is to protect your children from your gun, the innocent. I know the case that I purchased for $270. I happen to be adult and I happen to be a man and I'm pretty good with tools, but I can tell you with a screwdriver in this one that was metal and supposedly a vault, in fact, it's listed as a safe and a vault with me with a screwdriver in less than five minutes, I can break into that case. And so it's not a matter of not being able to protect it, a gun from an adult in a case. I guarantee an adult with a tool can get into any of the cases on the market. So it's way overkill. They've spent way, you have to spend way too much money to buy a case to protect it from an adult when it's a child you're trying to protect it from. This case will stop children that are not precocious, that are not crazy with tools, 
the, uh, from getting into it. It's even got a, a, a cable that attaches to the case so that you can wrap the cable around the frame of your bed and loop it back into it. In fact, I have the cable right here. This is, this is a cable that is part of the case and you take it and you put it, loop it around the, uh, the frame of the bed so that now it's attached solidly to the bed and then this end of the cable will just slip in just by the hinge of the case and then you close it and this will not come out of the case. So now the kids, if they happen to find the case and they're interested in it, they can't run off with it and try to find tools and different things. And then not only that, if they, they get messing with this case and they put their finger on it, on the scanner and they recognize that it's a fingerprint scanner and they touch this scanner five different times, it'll alarm. And it's an alarm that says, hey, mom, somebody's fooling with the gun case. And mom can come in and say, "We, this is a learning opportunity. This is a moment for you to understand, kids, that you don't get into this. This is mom and dad's room. There's something in here that we don't want you to access. And so you stay out of this. You do not get into this. And I'm not one that advocates paddling and spanking and discipline, but that's a time that if, if it required a paddling to protect your child, you have the opportunity, the learning moment to teach this child, you stay out of that, okay? And then still, it won't allow the kid in, even if mom's gone and it starts alarming and it alarms, it'll have a little siren that's going off and that siren will go off for five minutes. And I'll demonstrate it here in just a minute. It'll go off for five minutes and then it'll stop so that it doesn't wear out the batteries. Okay, so now it'll stop. Next time mom or dad comes to check the case, they wake it up and it'll immediately start flashing red to say, somebody's been fooling with this case. So now you still can go back and say to the kids, kids, I can tell somebody's been in my room, somebody's been messing with this case. Let's get into a learning opportunity and teach you, you do not get into this. This is something that's worse than poison. This kills people. So you stay out of this. So the learning opportunity is there. It also has a low battery alarm. And the battery, we know the lab battery will last for over a year. In fact, we've tested over 4,000 operations and it's still going strong well. So, but we still recommend that maybe every Easter or some holiday, you remember to change your batteries. And if the batteries begin to die, we'll get an alarm. It's similar to a smoke alarm. And so it'll begin to beep and let you know the batteries need to be replaced. So now you can come wake up the scanner, scan your finger, replace the batteries. And if for some reason or another, the batteries go dead, it also has a tubular key lock that you can stick in and manually open it, even if the batteries go dead. Or when you first receive the case, when you're setting it up, the batteries won't be installed. So you'll have a key that'll be outside of the case. The case will be locked. Use your key to open it. You put your batteries in and you do your programming. So two alarms, one for tamper evidence and one for low batteries. Child resistant case. It's made of polycarbonate, which is classified by the plastics industry as unbreakable. It is. Uh, the design of it is made to just be very discreet so as not to attract attention. It's, it's a dark color, it's matte finish, it's just very discreet. In fact, I'm, I'm going to reach over and I'm going to pick up Artemis. And so this is Artemis. This is the case that we have developed. So It won't scratch furniture. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's polycarbonate. It's the same material that uh, military grade body armor is made out of. This stuff is amazingly resilient and, and uh, unbreakable. And so the case, yes, Maggie said it, it won't scratch furniture. It's relatively light, okay? So when you ship it, it's not gonna cost a fortune to ship, but this is the Artemis case. And the inside is large enough to hold a model 1911 handgun. And so the 1911 handgun is the most common home defense or home security firearm there is. This is designed to hold a 1911 firearm. So this is extremely versatile. Uh, it can hold all kinds of things. In fact, we had a friend of ours. Maggie, you might want to yeah, tell I about that. I have a friend of mine. His name is Myra. She said, oh, this is great. I'm so glad you have this. She says, I'm a working mother. And she says, I have sons. She says, I want to put my TV remotes in there so they'll do their homework. 
<laughs> and so that when I come home, then I have the choice to release those TV remotes or not. So it's incredibly versatile. It's friendly. It's not something that we recommend you leave out in the open where your kids are going to be messing with it all the time. But nevertheless, it's very, very versatile. And it's, it's not something that will attract attention. The kids aren't going to say, oh, what's that? It's dark, so if it's in the shadow of a bed, it is almost hidden. It hides in plain sight. It's it's hiding underneath the bed, or in a, the dark, or in the a, shadow, in a drawer, you know, somewhere dark. Sure, Top and so of it, it's closet. designed specifically that way. And so also, um, um, I talked about the security cable. It also has four holes in the bottom of it that if you've got something wood and you want to screw it down to it. You can screw it in place also, so it's it, it it can stay in place by the security cable, or you can screw it into location if you're very concerned about somebody moving it. We're losing two children a week. Yeah, two children a week are dying to firearms. But those are not the ones that are injured or maimed permanently. There's those are the ones that are dying. Two children a week are dying. When Wayne and I were developing this, we've reached kind of an altruistic state, you know, point in our lives when we want to give back to our community and the world and make the world a better place. Children are our future. Uh, we need to protect them and, and do all that we can to keep them safe as they grow up and learn the lessons of life. Let's talk a little bit more about Artemis. This is, uh, um, again, Artemis. We say Artemis protecting the innocent. And so th this is the actual Artemis case. We've now finished the retail carton. And this is the retail carton for Artemis. And we're very proud of the artwork that's involved. It's got instructions on how to use it. And so this is now the retail carton for Artemis. We have plans for the future as well. There was a local person who lives maybe 30 minutes from here who was in the Coeur d'Alene area over Christmas time last year and she was shopping in a big box store with her two-year-old and some cousins and different things and her two-year-old pulled her self-protection handgun out of her purse and shot her with it. Killed she her. died. So we're hoping to be able to create a purse security case as well that's biometric. We will we will be developing the uh, a purse case. That's the next one we're going to develop. Mothers need protection sometimes. A lot of the different places where there's big cities, a lot of mothers won't even shop in the middle of the day because they're so worried about the parking lot issues, and they've got young children and things with them. This is a real issue. And there are more single parent families than ever before. And so. so that's the next case that we will be developing is one specifically for a purse. Then after that, we're going to develop one for a shotgun and a rifle. So that if you've got a rifle at home and a shotgun and you're going to take your son out and teach him how to target shoot, you can put it in the case and you can turn your back on your car and that kid isn't going to grab the gun and get carried away and shoot himself or shoot somebody else. So this is the third one we're going to do. So we've got plans to continue to protect families and listen from, from firearms while protecting our Second Amendment right. That Second Amendment right, people have died for this right. I am adamant. I am very excited and anxious about being able to preserve and protect that Second Amendment right. Our Second Amendment right is vulnerable right now. You can't make a mother more upset than her seeing a picture of a child that was hurt by a firearm that could have been prevented. This will prevent that from happening. This will reduce those. We have to get it out so people know it's available. And we're making it available for a price that that will less than a tank of diesel fuel for my truck. I mean, it's it's not something that is any longer going to be a barrier for people to not buy protection and and get the protection in place. No longer can they careless, carelessly unsecure their guns for any reason. Living here in the western United States, there are many people who enjoy firearms for target practice, for competitions, for sporting, all kinds of different things. And we just feel that this is a really great product to help children, to help keep and children families. safe. Mm -hmm. So now uh, we're going to go ahead and, and look at Artemis. Uh, again, this is uh, the case. I'll, I'll turn it around a little bit and let you look at it a little bit from different angles. 
so that you can see what it looks like. So this is the Artemis case. And so now I'm going to try with the very awkward position that I'm in to operate Artemis. So I'm going to activate the window that says I'm going to put my finger on it and it opens. So now we've got access to a firearm inside this case. So it activated and it worked very simply, even at the odd angle that I just operated it at. And quietly, so you don't alert an intruder. Quietly, quickly, and very effectively. First time, every time. If you're in a panic, you are not going to remember a combination. I mean, I'm not going to remember a combination and try to fumble around in the dark. So. Or go to try to find a key. And if you've got a key in your room where your gun case is, your kids are going to find it. And so this is just you. Or I've got 200 prints I can store in this. So anybody else that I feel needs access to this case or access to the gun, if it's Maggie and I'm gone and she's home alone and now she has an intruder, she can program her fingerprint into this and have instant access. I mentioned I have an adult child living here at home. Maggie and I travel sometimes and she's home alone. And if she needs access to that case, she's registered her fingerprint. It'll hold 200. So my 10 fingers, I can do each one 20 ways or I can have my family and loved ones or those I want to have access I can grant access to. So this is that's the way Artemis operates. Also, while I have it open, I'll, if you'll help me hold it open, sure. Maggie, mm -hmm. uh, I can show you this was the cable that I showed you earlier. That cable goes into a little notch here in the side, and then you close the case. And once the case is closed and latched, you can not pull it out. So now it's very simple to secure the gun underneath your bed with this wrapped around uh, the frame or member of your bed. So now this case, they can't pick it up and go run off with it and go figure out if, you know, if it's a, a 13, 14 year old, we'll take it out in the garage and start messing with it. It's, it's there, show the secure. Alarm. Show the tamper evidence alarm. Okay, Maggie mentioned to show the alarm. So if, if someone that is unauthorized tries to get into this five different times, we're going to get an alarm. So now if Maggie will just kind of support it for me there, I'm going to push it one time. And I'm going to use a finger that's not programmed. Okay, so the red light came on. That's one time. Push it again. I'll use a different finger that's not programmed. So red light comes on, that's twice. Use another finger that's not programmed. That's three times, and I would, I'd use another hand, but I'll just use one of these again that has not been programmed. And then this, I think, is the fifth time, and we'll put that one on there too. And so now, now we've got an alarm. So now the alarm's going off. Mom, mom, somebody messing with this case. Come on in here, mom, there's a learning opportunity. So now mom comes and puts her finger on the case. It's a registered finger. It opens and it stops the alarm. She then takes and sets the case to the side and she has a learning opportunity and experience to discuss it with her kids and help them to understand what was going on. There's uh, something in there that can kill you. You stay out of there. Wayne, Maggie, thank you so much. Not just coming from me as a mom and a grandmother, but soon there will be thousands and thousands of parents that are grateful for what you've done. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share this wisdom. Well, Becky, thank you. Um, you touched our heart in your willingness to help to spread the word. Uh, we truly believe that we will save children and not only children, but we will save families. Uh, if there's an injury or an accident with a gun, often those families will fragment and so divorce and the families completely come apart so not only are we trying to save the psyche of the child or save some from being killed but also save the structure of families that don't need this disasters thank you You're yes Becky. thank you the mother of all broken hearts is mine and if I'm getting just what I deserve For such cruel punishment to fit my crime Tell me, how long must I burn? I couldn't read the writing that was on the wall Am I so bad to not have discerned That this flame that I was feeding would soon take off? How long must I burn? In just one moment I realized Like watching
in my life flashed before my eyes I found myself out on a burning limb She's really leaving me for him The mother of all broken hearts is mine And if I'm getting just what I deserve For such 